Adam from EcoWise here again. Well, we're on lockdown once more. Um, we're lucky to be locked down in our beautiful home with our beautiful garden here on top of the hill. Um, there's a lot happening. Although it's the beginning of the winter, although it doesn't feel like it, there's like 14 degrees, we can talk about that another time. But there's a lot of movement and dynamics and change happening. For instance, I just want to show you this. I'm going to show you this in a sec, but I want to show you this first. Look, you may not be able to see, but right here, whoo, you see that? There's a, there's a red admiral butterfly. He's coming back again now. He's flying in front of me there, you see him? And this is his territory. And this time of year, there he comes again. They're really territorial. And he's sitting up here on top of this little garden. He's gone back now there. And every time another butterfly flies past, he goes and he kind of, has a little standoff and they have a flap around together and it's not that aggressive it doesn't seem but they've been quite territorial i don't know what's going on exactly but it's quite exciting and then we got this and are these here there's a few of them these are these are called they're called reed mace or they're called cattails or they're called bulrushes or in latin they're called typha latifolia and some of you may recognize them they grow not in places like this. I picked these, like there's one here, you can see I just shoved it in the ground. I picked these down at the bottom there where there's a little lake, because they grow in areas around lakes and around river and swampy areas, wet, marshy areas. And they have long strappy leaves and they grow on, as a marginal plant and they're beautiful. And you can imagine how they've spread all around the world. With seeds that do this, those are seeds. I don't know if you can see. If you touch this here, you see that when there's a bit of wind, it's like they go right there. I mean, they're tiny seeds, but they're on these kind of caterpillar things and they get taken up into the wind and sometimes apparently even up into the jet stream. So kilometers high and travel around the world. So you find these in Asia, in Europe, in America, all over the place, anywhere where there's wet. And these have been, these are familiar to many people and have been used by people for a long time the whole bit of all of the plant is edible especially the rhizomes and the roots you can make a kind of starchy flour from it or you can eat them raw you can cook them i'm not suggesting you do but they have been and they can be and these seeds themselves have been used by many different people for many different things one of the things you can do and i'll show you this later when it gets dark <clears throat> i got it in my nose is they make really good tinder to start a fire with I'll show you that later when it gets dark, we'll try making a thing. But they've also been used by certain people as, as nappies, panellini, you know what I mean? So when for babies, it's this very absorbent. They've been used for like bandages for wounds. And they've all been used, some Native American tribes I read, used to use them inside their moccasins to keep their feet dry and warm. And even can be stuffed in the first or second world war i can't remember which one of them i just was reading recently they use them in in life jackets to keep people afloat but they're very very good insulating so this is an amazing natural material you can even here comes catkin predictably he's coming to have a check it out too and talking about things flying and talking about catkin who is just down here she's coming to check it out because she always wants to be in the video Right. But Katkin, about an hour ago, Katkin was here in the garden and suddenly I saw Katkin look up like this and pay a lot of attention. Then I listened and I heard this going. Raw, raw, yeah, raw, raw. And Yenker had actually just said a few days ago, isn't it the right time of year when the cranes migrate? And I said, no, I think it's early. And then we thought about it and she was right. And Katkin heard them, and I heard them, and Yenka went running in and got a camera. And there were hundreds of them flying in formation above us. And you could hear them and see them, and we'll show you some images. I think Yenka got a new camera and took some great shots, I think. Katkin and me and Yenka, we're all here staring at these beautiful birds. And they're cranes, so they're big birds that live also in areas near water often. And they migrate at this time of year from the northern hemisphere, from the extreme north, like Siberia and the Arctic and northern Europe, the extreme north, where they spend the spring and the summer and have their babies and there's lots of food there. But then when it gets really cold there, 
they migrate to this kind of area of Europe and a bit further west to Spain and Portugal and even North Africa. And they spend the colder periods there, although this year is not cold. So we'll talk about that another time, but it's really not cold. Now it's about 14 degrees. Normally, this time of year, it would be quite a lot colder. So we saw these amazing cranes that, again, are flying on these jet streams and high up. Well, I don't know if they're on the jet streams, but they're pretty high anyway. I mean, they're huge birds. They're about this size. I've seen them, and they've they got long necks. They look a bit like herons, gru in Italian, the crane. They're the common European grain, crane. And they're all around the world, and then you find different species of cranes. And wherever you find them, they're associated with all kinds of mystical things and spirituality and sacredness. There's this connection. They seem in the ancients used to believe there was a connection between the sky realm and the gods and earth. So it's kind of a special time here. And uh, a few things have happened in the world and maybe things are going to be all right after all. Anyway, we're going to come back later and I'm going to show you a little trick that you shouldn't try at home, but I'm going to show you a little trick when it gets dark. <laughs> Hi guys, it's me. I'm back again. It's the evening time. It's nearly dark. In fact, you probably can't really see me very much. Robin singing over there. Blackbird over there. One of the last bats just flew over. I'll be in hibernation very soon. And I wanted to show you with these bulrushes. There's the bell telling me it's, I don't know what time it is, probably 6 o'clock, 5.30, something like that. It's getting dark earlier and earlier. Ding! That means it's 30, so 5.30. So the bulrushes, I promise I was going to show you a little trick. It's not, now this is a trick you definitely shouldn't do at home, because as you see, I'm specially prepared. I've got my protective clothing on, I've got my pyrotechnic fire protection boots, which is very important fire resistant gloves that means I'm ready to do my trick now this is a trick that I used to do it's not a very good trick by the way but I just wanted to show you how these things burn and can be used for tinder I used to do it when my kids were little as a firework trick because we didn't have a shop nearby that sold fireworks so I discovered this and I thought it was kind of cool they didn't think it was very cool but I still think it's cool but I'm going to show you so very carefully I'm taking out the lighter now watch, here we go. I don't know what's going to happen. Look at that. That's kind of cool, yeah? Look at that. Look at that. Yo, whoa, look at that. Whoa, whoa. Oh, cool. Try again. You ready? Here we go. Again, don't do this at home. Got my hair tied up, special gloves. Here we go. You ready? And one more time. <laughs> That's it. Wasn't that good? <laughs> Ow! Look, at this time of year, <coughs> we've got a fire in our house to keep us warm and to cook with. Look, come and look inside. Look, look over this way. Look. That's where we're going now. Should be kind of cozy and warm. Anyway, I hope you're all cozy and warm too. And we'll be in touch soon. Bye bye.